many of us have heard about the, the toxic spill that happened when this uh, bitumen from the Alberta tar sands mm -hmm. that's been piping through Michigan, uh, that pipe ruptured mm -hmm. uh, a couple years ago. And that cleanup is still uh, being done at, at, at upwards of a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. But the big issue that a lot of people aren't talking about is that uh, there is yet another pipeline in development mm -hmm. that could rival the Keystone Pipeline in size and scope. Sure. So this is a huge uh, vector whereby these tar sands and all that carbon that is locked up could find its way onto the world market. So can you talk about that? Sure, actually before the, the spill on Marshall even occurred, Enbridge had plans to put through this expansion project within the Great Lakes and um, into uh, the parts of Canada and then back out to the east coast of the United States. It was called the Trailbreaker Project. And um, that project died years before the, the Marshall disaster because it wasn't economically viable. And I'm sure there were other reasons why that project did not get put through. Uh, but um, after the Marshall disaster occurred, um, Enbridge was required to replace pieces of this pipeline that was decrepit and old in Michigan. Uh, again, it's part of the, the larger lakehead system and it runs throughout the Great Lakes. And uh, they took that opportunity to replace key sections of that pipeline, including the international border crossing, um, which uh, it would have triggered a presidential permit had they gone through and uh, replaced the entire pipeline at once. And, and since those replacements have occurred after the Marshall disaster, they've gone through and they said, okay, well, we need to replace other pieces of this line. And now they're coming back and saying the entire line needs to be replaced. But the catch is, they're not replacing this line. What they're doing is they're, they're decommissioning the old line 6B uh, that's in the ground and the one that burst. And they are filling it with inert gas and leaving it there. And then they're building a new line, a much larger line, 36 inch pipeline next to the line 6B. And this will have the capability to send uh, three times the amount of uh, raw tar sands or diluted bitumen through the Great Lakes um, and eventually through Canada and eventually out uh, through New England to possibly be exported. Tell us about uh, what the capacity of the old pipeline was and what the potential capacity of the new pipeline is going to be. Sure, the, the old pipeline is a 30 inch line uh, throughout most of it and so it's around 400,000 barrels per day. Uh, was would have been the capacity but because that line has been um, it's older, it was built in the 60s, it, it has a lot of issues on it. Uh, they have been required to maintain it at a lower capacity, so it runs around 240,000 barrels per day to 260,000 barrels per day. The new line that they're putting next to the old line has uh, the capability to run 800,000 barrels per day once it is complete and in the ground uh, through the, the line 6B. And um, not only are they doing that project, but there are projects that are popping up on the entire lakehead system, which runs again throughout uh, the Great Lakes Basin in the Midwest, where they're expanding pipelines before and after that, um, and, and setting it up so that they have a clear route that runs again uh, through set all of the Great Lakes. It touches it at, at some point or another, and then out to the East Coast through um, New England. Okay, so this new pipeline could conceivably be uh, carrying close to a million barrels a day of this diluted bitumen from the tar sands. Correct. And uh, how does that compare to the Keystone project in, in capacity? So the Keystone project is around a million, so it's, it's slightly less. Uh, but the, the issue and the problem that you have to incorporate into this is that we have several lines that connect up into Canada um, in Sarnia. So there's Line 6B, which we all know runs on the uh, southern part of Michigan. Um, and then there's Line 5, which is the scarier line in our eyes, which runs under the Straits of Mackinac. It's just as old as Line 6B. They're planning to expand it in some capacity and um, they have not really 
done any types of replacements like they're planning to do with Line 6B. And so we have almost an identical line running through um, Lake Huron, Lake Michigan for a significant distance. And there are no uh, solid plans in the works to safeguard this pipeline um, versus Line 6B where they're, they're saying they're replacing it with new and better, bigger pipeline. Um, that's not happening with Line 5. But these two lines connect up in Sarnia, so you have the capacity of Line 5 and the capacity of Line 6 all running east. And, and so the, the amount of product running through the Great Lakes to refineries, we refine it, we get the pollution, and then it gets shipped back out through Canada and then to the east coast. Um, it's, it's substantially larger, actually, than the Keystone XL. It's larger in, in, in potential Correct. because there are multiple lines. Correct.